بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations, peace and blessings upon the best of creation, the jewel and crown of creation, the beloved of Allah Almighty, the coolness to our eyes, the purpose of our lives, the reviver of our hearts, the inspirer to our minds, the awakener of our souls, the most honored one, the most praised one, the most generous one, the most kind one, undoubtedly, he is the most beautiful one. None other than Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Ashabihi Wa Barak Wa Sallam Al Ardul Muqaddasa, the Holy Land which is the region where Palestine, Syria, Lebanon, the Sinai region, Jordan, these countries are these countries are situated as you must be well aware and must now well know the significance of this land the importance of this land. This is known as the land of the Anbiya wa Rusul, Baladul Anbiya'i wal Mursaleen, the land of the Prophets and the Messengers. This land is referred to as the land of the great Nabi and Rasul of Allah Almighty, Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam. and his family who resided and spent time, lived and are buried there in the small city of Hebron, in Arabic referred to as Khalil. Sayyiduna Ibrahim, Sayyiduna Ishaq, Sayyiduna Yaqub and Sayyiduna Yusuf. This is father, son, son and then son, four generations of Anbiya. Sayyiduna Ibrahim is the father, Sayyiduna Ishaq is the son, Sayyiduna Yaqub is his son, and Sayyiduna Yusuf is his son. And they're all resting and buried in the same vicinity and locality in Hebron, Masjid Khalil, as it's reported. <coughs> At the same time, Sayyiduna Lut alayhi salam, the nephew of Sayyiduna Ibrahim, he is also a Nabi and Rasul of Allah Almighty, a Nabi of Allah Almighty that lived in Palestine. Sayyiduna Suleiman and Dawood, Sayyiduna Dawood and his son Suleiman, they were in Palestine. Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam had immense desire to be buried in Al-Quds al-Sharif in Jerusalem. But eventually it's reported that he passed away in a region called Al-Kathib al-Ahmar, which is today in modern times referred to as the area of Ariha, Jericho. And there are red mountains there, sandy mountains, red sandy mountains near the Dead Sea. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, it is reported that there Al-Qabr al-Sharif is in Jericho or just outside of Jericho in Al-Kathib al-Ahmar. So many Anbiya wa Rusul live there and are buried there. Hence why it is referred to Palestine as, Palestine is referred to as Balad al-Anbiya wal Mursaleen. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated there. Migrated how? They went and did the mi'raj from al-Ardul Muqaddasa. 
from Bayt al Makti Sharif, from Masjid al Aqsa. This is where they travel from Masjid al Haram to Masjid al Aqsa in a very small part of the night. And then in Masjid al Aqsa, they led all the Anbiya wa Rusul in prayer and then ascended to the heavens. The ascension, the heavenly ascension, took place in Masjid al Aqsa, Palestine. And thereafter, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam emphasized the importance of Al Quds Sharif when he said, La tashuddu rihal illa ila thalathati masajid. Do not travel except, make intention to travel except to three masjids Masjid al Haram, Masjid al Nabawi, and Masjid al Aqsa. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraged instructed the companions that they should travel there. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you are able to send oil to light the lamps in Jerusalem, then send oil to them. Meaning send charity towards them, for this will benefit them. This will assist and help those who stand in the face of injustice, those who are the resistance. So the Prophet wasallam encouraged the Sahaba. And we know that in the year 636 or 37, during the caliphate of Sayyiduna Umar bin al-Khattab, Amir al-Mu'mineen, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the victory of Palestine, the conquest and conquering of Palestine on the hands, at the hands of Amir al-Mu'mineen Sayyiduna Umar. Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an, he traveled from Medina Munawwara to Masjid al-Aqsa, Palestine, with a group of Sahaba, amongst them Sayyiduna Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They traveled to Masjid al-Aqsa. And at that time, Jerusalem and Palestine was under Roman rule. The Romans were still in control and charge of Palestine. And the head of the Christian religion in Palestine at that time in Jerusalem was a man called Sophronius. And Sophronius awaited, eagerly awaited the arrival of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an. And the very famous story of when Sayyiduna Umar wanted to offer his prayers, Sophronius said that you can read them in a small part of the church, in the back of the church. And Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an refused and said that I will offer the prayers outside because I fear that after me, the Muslims will turn the church into a masjid. And the Christians then established a masjid by the name of Masjid Umar, along with the Sahaba that were resident there. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an had an agreement with Sophronius, known as al uhdatul umariya the agreement of Sayyidina Umar and the Christians and the other religions in Palestine at that time. That they would practice their religion freely. There will be no restrictions. However, they must pay the jizya, the tax. For living and practicing their religion on this land, they must pay the jizya. Pay the jizya, then you can practice. From that time till today, the keys of the church of Saprika. And if you know, in Christian theology and religion, the church of Saprika is one of the oldest churches in the world. And not only is it one of the oldest churches in the world, many Christians believe that when the Prophet Jesus passed away, they believe, Christian belief, that he was buried in this church. And the area where his blessed body was washed, according to Christian teachings, that area is still preserved. 
and then the head Mubarak and so on and so forth, they believe that Jesus is resting in this church. According to Christian teachings, as we believe that Sayyidina Isa is was lifted to the heavens and is in the heavens right now and he shall return towards the end of time. So Sophronius, the Christians lived there. And when the Muslims took over Palestine and Jerusalem specifically here, the keys were given to a Muslim family that resided in Jerusalem at that time. From that time till now, the descendants of that very same family still have the keys to the church. And every morning and every evening they open the church and they close the church. And Western media want to paint an image of the Muslims in Palestine as barbaric. They want to paint an image of the Muslims in Palestine as violent. It is far from the truth. If the Christians have entrusted Muslims to have the keys to the holiest church in Christianity, then surely this is one such evidence of the tolerance of the Muslims that live in Palestine. Allahu Akbar. After Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, he appointed one of the companions who lived there, Sayyiduna Ubadat ibn Samit, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, as the Qadi, the judge, Qadi al-Quddat, the chief judge, chief justice of Palestine. Sayyiduna Ubadat ibn Samit lived there until the <coughs> 30s Hijri. And he was someone who took part in most of the battles of Islam with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he understood the importance of Al-Quds Sharif Palestine and Jerusalem and he remained there and he passed away there after him the judge that was appointed was Sayyiduna Shaddad Ibn Al-Aws radiallahu ta'ala anhu and it's reported that Sayyiduna Shaddad this companion Ibn al-Aws radiyallahu an, Shaddad ibn al-Aws radiyallahu an lived there for over 60 years. He passed away in Palestine, in Jerusalem, and he was buried in Babu Rahma next to Masjid al-Aqsa. These two sahaba are buried in Masjid al-Aqsa, next to Masjid al-Aqsa in Babu Rahma. And it's reported, the city or the town or the country in which any of Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's companions are resting on the day of judgment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word has said yawma nad'u kulla unasin bi imamihim that Allah they will be called all the people will be called to stand before the imams the imams of those localities will be those sahaba that are buried there so for example, which companion is resting in Istanbul? Who is the famous companion in Istanbul? Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, glad tidings to who? To those who ride on the ship. The Navy, the first Muslim Navy, glad tidings to them for those who participate in this will be going to Jannah. Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, the one who welcomed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Medina Munawwara, when they first entered Medina Sharif, Nabi alayhi salatu salam stayed in Hazrat Abu Ayyub al-Ansari's house. They ate from the food of Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. This Sayyiduna Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu an, he traveled to Istanbul, the conquest of Istanbul, when it came under Muslim control and rule, he passed away in Istanbul and was buried in Istanbul, Constantinia. So on the day of judgment, the Muslims that are resting and buried in Istanbul, who will be the Imam? 
سیدنا ابو ایوب الانصاری it is reported that Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas, he traveled to China and passed away in China. The Muslims who are buried there, Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas radiyallahu an will be their Imam on the Day of Judgment. Likewise, Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiyallahu an, he passed away in Jordan. The Muslims, they will be under Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiyallahu an. Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid and Sayyidina Bilal, they are resting where? In Damascus, in Syria, in Halab, in these cities of Syria. They will be the imams of those people on the day of judgment. And the imams of the people of Jerusalem will be who? Sayyidina Shaddad ibn al-Aws and Sayyidina Ubadat ibn Samit radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. So these are great companions who travel to Palestine, who lived in Palestine. The very famous narration of the companion, Sayyiduna Tamim Ad-Dari, Tamim ibn al-Aws Ad-Dari, radiyallahu an, the one who was Christian and he accepted Islam when? After he was on a ship and he was traveling, his ship got wrecked onto an island and on that island he found a creature that was hairy from head to toe. He had hair all over him. And he was referred to as Jasasa. And the Jasasa, when Sayyidina Tamim seen him, he was in amazement as his, at his appearance. He said, come, I will show you something more amazing. Something more terrifying even. He took him into a cave and chained inside this cave was who? Al-Masih Dajjal. Sina Tamim al-Dari seen and met the Jal. And the Jal then told him that Allah will release him towards the end of time. And that to warn the people. Warn the people. Sina Tamim al-Dari then came to Medina Munawwara. After this ordeal with the Jal. And told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa what happened and accepted Islam. Then he went and he settled in Hebron. Or well, he settled in Palestine and he passed away in the Holy Land, in Al-Ardul Muqaddasa, Palestine. Sayyidina Tamim Ad-Dari radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Unlike this Sayyidina Salman al-Farisi, it is reported that Sayyidina Salman radiallahu an, he spent time in Palestine on Jabal Zaytun, mountain of olives. There is a house which has been preserved and it is reported that Sayyiduna Salman radiallahu an lived in this house. And if you have ever studied and read the story of Sayyiduna Salman al-Farisi, the Persian companion, he was a seeker of the truth. He was a seeker of the truth. Salik al-Haqq. He traveled in the, all around the Arab world seeking the truth until he arrived to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he accepted Islam and he said, because he was an expert on the Bible and the Torah, he memorized them, he understood them. He said that your description has been written in these books. And he accepted Islam on the hands of the Prophet ﷺ. And he became one of the most senior companions, Sayyidina Salman. Inshallah, one day we will talk about Sayyidina Salman at Jumu'ah and his greatness and his virtues and his merits. These were great Sahaba, radiyallahu anhum ajma'een, some of the great Sahaba who traveled to Palestine and lived there. My brothers, it has been over 90 days of genocide, 90 days. It's reported that 4% of the population has been murdered and killed. 65% of that 4% are women and children. 70% of the building infrastructure of, Pal- of Gaza has been destroyed or partially destroyed. 90% of the people have been displaced. And there seems to be no end to this genocide. The Western governments and powers continue to allow the shed, shedding and the spilling of the Palestinian blood. They don't stand to speak against this injustice. Rather, they are funding this injustice and genocide. They are funders of this genocide. And what is happening in the Red Sea right now, 
what has happened with the assassination of certain leaders in Iran and in Lebanon, they are on the brink of a war in the Middle East. And they continue to do this. Hatta, it's reported that there is, that Biden's government has told the IDF forces that they must retreat from the land of Gaza. For they have other intentions and plans for the region. It is a very sad, sad state. A lot of innocent people have been killed, murdered. We must continue to raise awareness for them. We must continue with this targeted boycotting. We must continue with the support of the Palestinian people. We mustn't remain silent. We mustn't go silent. We mustn't carry on like life is normal. People are still being murdered and killed in Gaza. We demand an immediate ceasefire. Whatever happens, there has to be an end to this bloodshed and genocide that is happening in Palestine. What answer will we give to Allah Almighty living in the West, knowing full well what is happening with the freedoms of speech and rights that we we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah Almighty raise the ranks of the martyrs of Gaza. Allah Almighty grant them victory. Allah Almighty grant them strength. Allah unite the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama so that we can continue to support the resistance and the people of Palestine. Wa aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa akhru da'waya anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allah, Allah, Allah. لا إله إلا الله جود علي